So, hello everybody. Um, um, welcome to my public PhD defense. I present my thesis entitled Understanding the Impact of Release Policies of Software Development Processes. Let's start. Due to the competitive business world, software organizations must deliver new features and bug fixes fast to gain and sustain the satisfaction of the users. To do so, many software projects change their release model toward rapid release models. Rapid releases correspond to the releases that are delivered with a duration, a release duration of weeks or days. It's the second most mentioned benefit of agile methodologies. Despite the increased adoption, rapid releases have not been studied until recently in the literature. Previous research analyzed the benefits and challenges of adoption, uh, of adoption of rapid releases. They are claimed to offer reduced time to market, faster user feedback, and users benefit because of faster user, um, fastest access to functionality improvement and security update. It also improved the turnout time to fix bad bugs. Despite these benefits, previous research showed that rapid releases often comes at the expenses of reduced software reliability, accumulated technical debt, and increased time pressure. This thesis overall objective is to empirically understand the short and long-term impact of rapid releases on different parts of the software development process of open source projects. Such understanding can provide valuable insight to help open source organization to consider what preparation and adjustment to their release management process is necessary when switching to a shorter release cycle. Also, such insight can bring up or open up a research direction that can help open source foundation, commercial organization, and practitioners on how to plan and adopt rapid releases and how to migrate properly to rapid release model. It can also bring up better understanding of what are the, uh, or better understanding and generalization of the release practices. First of all, I will start by presenting the case studies that we studied in this uh, thesis. To validate our thesis statement, we relied on mixed method research approach. This thesis makes use of case studies and survey as complementary uh, methods uh, to, uh, to quantitatively and qualitatively assess the usefulness of this thesis. We selected Eclipse and Firefox as our case studies because they are long-lived um, open source projects. And most importantly, since Firefox and Eclipse adapted rapid releases. The contribution of the thesis is divided into two parts. The first part, where I study the impact of rapid releases on the bug handling activity in Eclipse. This part is based on uh, work accepted at XME 2019 and Journal of Systems and Software uh, 2021. Let's start. We selected Eclipse as our case study because it's a long-lived open source project. It has a sufficiently long release history with associated bug handling activity. It also has a stable develop, uh, developer community and regular release cycle. And most importantly, because since September 2018, Eclipse switched to quarter releases. So instead of having a release every one year, now we are having a release every 13 weeks. However, Eclipse started preparing for this transition uh, since uh, release 4.6 by having a three update releases after each major release. The Eclipse annual release schedule is composed of seven milestones occurring at, at roughly six weeks interval, followed by four release candidates. While for the quarter one, it's composed of three milestones occurring at three weeks interval, followed by two weekly candidates. In both release, uh, both release schedule, the release uh, candidates are delivered during the feature freeze period. A common practice of large uh, software projects is to impose feature freeze when approaching a release deadline. During this period, all the work done on adding new features is suspended uh, and uh, shifting the effort toward uh, bug fixing and carrying out a test and fix iteration in order to improve the quality and the stability of the software. The overall objective of this, uh, of this work is to study the evolution of Eclipse with the aim to analyze its bug handling process for the purpose of assessing the impact of rapid releases and the feature freeze period from the point of view of maintenance in the context of bug handling activity. 
Software maintenance is a part of the software development process, and bug fixing comes as a priority to run a software seamlessly. Uh, thus, we uh, analyze the advantages and disadvantages of the adoption of rapid release on the bug handling activity. The figure here shows um, the um, bug handling process recommended by Bugzilla bug tracking tool and followed by Eclipse, where the bugs goes from unconfirmed, then it's new, then assigned to the developer, then after that it's resolved with possible resolution of fix, duplicate, want fix, and so on. After that, the bug is verified, either verified or reopened because it needs more work. Following the goal question matrix approach, the overall objective of our work is divided into two main goals, is actually each associated with two research questions that will guide the case study design and the empirical analysis. The first research goal aimed to study if the transition to rapid releases resulted in less time for the developer community to handle bug before the release, potentially leading to more post-release bugs in need, to, need of resolution. To do so, we will analyze if the bug handling activity is different before and after the release, and whether and how this changed after the adoption of rapid release. Where in the second goal, we studied to which extent the bug handling activity is affected by the presence of feature freezes, and whether the transition to rapid releases has led to an observable difference as a shorter duration of this period, the feature freeze period, can potentially affect the bug handling activity. So first, we defined our matrix that we use in our analysis, the triaging time, which is the time uh, for the bug to be assigned from new to assigned. The fixing time, which is the time from new to fixed, so for a bug to be fixed. Also, we define the resolution rate, which is the proportion of the bugs resolved over the bugs reported. And the fixing rate, which is the number of bugs report fixed over the number of bugs resolved. Then, to perform analysis, we retrieve Eclipse core bugs from Bugzilla. Using a Bugzilla API, we retrieve 215k bugs, Eclipse core. Then we try to remove all the bugs that are marked as enhancement, the bugs that are with unspecified versions, the bugs that are targeting releases that are out of the scope of our study, the bugs that are targeting versions that are not listed in the official releases of Eclipse. So we ended up with 138k bugs reports. We analyzed these bug reports and we achieved the information of the maintainers working on these bugs. Uh, and we contact Eclipse, uh, Eclipse maintainers in order to get their feedback about the adoption of rapid releases. So they switched to quarterly releases. To achieve our first goal, we address two, these two research questions, where we first empirically analyze the bug handling rates before and after the release, and if there's any notable difference that could be observed for the rapid releases. And second, since maintainers strive to deliver a release with as few bugs as possible, we expect that the bug handling activity before a release leads to a faster bug triaging and fixing time than after the release. Oh, let's start with this. For research question one, the figure is showing the uh, resolution rate and fixing rate um, before and after each release. The y-axis is showing the rate and the y-axis, uh, I mean, the x-axis is showing the release and the y-axis is showing the rate. First of all, we, we focus on the resolution rate uh, curves. Uh, we can see that the resolution rate is slightly decreasing over time, but there's no difference between before, there's no significant difference between before and after the release. When focusing on the fixing time, we find that the fixing time is increasing over time. It's higher before than after the release. However, we, we find no significant change in the bug handling rates behavior after the switch to quarter releases. So we didn't find any impact, any impact on the bug handling uh, rate in terms of resolution and fixing rate of the rapid releases. Now concerning the bug handling time. Uh, bug handling time, we measured the bug charging time and fixing time. We did the experiment for all the releases, but now we will show only one annual and one quarter release. 
What we did is that we used the technique of survival analysis to model the expected time duration until the occurrence of the event of interest. In our case, the event of interest is triaging, uh, assigning a bug, or fixing the bug. Here, the graphs are showing the triaging time. So, the y-axis y is showing the probability for a bug to get triaged, and the x-axis is showing the duration in days for a bug to get triaged. The orange line corresponds to the bug reported after the release, while the blue one corresponds to the bugs reported before the release. It's clear that the bugs reported after the release are triaged faster than the one reported before the release. Look here, as an example, after 50 days, around 85% of the bugs after the release are being triaged. However, around 75% of the bugs after the release are being triaged. However, this difference between before and after is not observed anymore when, uh, when uh, going on time, so in the quarter release after the switch to quarter releases. And now uh, bugs are being trashed faster. Uh, if we look at the second figure, we can see that after less than 25, around 85% of the bugs before and after the release are being trashed. So to sum up the, the findings for the charging time, we find that for annual releases, bugs tend to get trashed faster than uh, after than before the release. We consider the transition to quarter release beneficial because this difference between before and after is not observable anymore. Bugs now are charged faster after the switch to quarter releases. Now, considering the fixing time, we didn't find any difference between the bug fixing rate and the bug fixing time before and after each release. Uh, nor, neither in the uh, neither in the no, annual releases nor in the uh, quarter releases. Now bugs are being trashed faster after the transition uh, to quarter releases. And when consulting the Eclipse maintainer, they confirmed our results that, yeah, now bugs are being fixed faster in the quarter releases. Now, for the second goal, we add this to these two research questions, where we analyze the bug handling rate, um, rate and time before and during the feature freeze period. So in the development period and the feature freeze period, uh, for each considered release and the effort spent in these periods and whether all of this changed after the switch to quarterly releases. So what we did really is that we focused on these two periods, the feature freeze period and the development period on the bugs in these two periods. First of all, we measured the fixing rate. We didn't find any observable difference in the fixing rate between the development period and the feature freeze period of each release. However, we find that during the feature freeze period, developers focus or maintainers focus on the bugs that are being reported during this period rather than the one reported in the development period earlier before. Moreover, we find that more effort, that indeed more effort is spent on fixing bug during the feature freeze period, because this is expected. Feature freeze period is for, for bug fixing and carrying out the test and fix automation, uh, iterations. However, this difference in effort appears to have increased for the quarter releases. So now the effort of bug fixing is shifted more toward this feature freeze period rather than in the development period. In this research question, we study whether bugs are indeed charged and fixed faster during the feature freeze period. We also study whether the charging, uh, the charging time and fixing time targeting the current release increase during this period, since maintainers may prefer to focus on the bugs of the upcoming release rather than the one targeting the um, delivered one already, yani the current one. First of all, we focus on the feature freeze period, on the bugs in the feature freeze period of the current release and the upcoming one. The figure here shows uh, the distribution, the bugs and plot showing the distribution of the fixing time for the next, for the current and the next release during the feature freeze period. It's clear that the bugs of the next release are being uh, fixed uh, faster during the feature freeze period. So what we find is that it takes less time to treasure and fix uh, First of all, it's important to say that I said the fixing and triaging time, but now I'm showing only the fixing time. It takes less time to triage and fix bug during um, of the next release compared to the current release during the feature freeze period. Then now we focus on the bugs of the current release. 
We want to see if the like approaching the deadline of the next release impact the, the, the charging and fixing time of the current one, the one already delivered. However, we find that bugs of the current release are charged and fixed faster during the feature freeze period, have stayed often longer compared to those in the development period. So the bugs that are charged, um, charged during the feature freeze period have uh, longer uh, fixing and charging time than the one uh, in the development period. However, this is not, any, this, is not, this is not the case anymore after the switch to quarter releases. Now we were focusing on the bugs of the next release during its development and feature free period. We find that the feature free period does not affect the triaging and the fixing time of the bugs for the next release. So bugs of the next release are triaged and fixed as soon as possible, regardless if they are reported during the development period or in the future free period. Now, uh, to sum up the findings of Eclipse and the develop maintenance feedback, the finding for Eclipse care, uh, highlights that careful preparation and planning are key for a successful transition to faster releases. Rapid releases enable the developer community to become more effective in bug handling activity in the presence of good testing plans, a good release management process, and adequate automated tools and processes. Feature freeze period need to be preserved since they allow to spend more focused effort fixing bugs for the upcoming release, as we saw in our analysis. Now, the effort, the effort in fixing bug is shifting toward the feature free speed. Some projects should invest in, uh, in, in test automation, exceptionally in the presence of rapid releases. Now, uh, moving to the second contribution of this thesis, where we revisit the impact of rapid releases on the software development process and and Mozilla Firefox. Different from previous study, we revisited, uh, we, like, we revisited the studies, but we focused on the recent switch to more rapid releases from the removal of Aurora channel to the switch to four weeks release cycle. In 2011, Firefox adopted rapid releases for the first time. They followed a pipeline release process with four uh, release channels of six weeks in interval. So they had nightly, Aurora, beta release channel of six weeks each one. So we are having a release every six weeks. Aurora was initially intended to be the first stabilization channel to provide further user feedback and for testing. However, this original intent was never materialized. The release cycle time has required Firefox to subvert the model rigorously over the years by uplifting new features to meet the market requirement. Thus, in order to address the release uh, complexity, duration complexity, in April 2017, the Aurora stabilization phase was removed from the cycle, reducing the release cycle by six to eight weeks. So now we have nightly, not now, then we have a nightly beta release each one of six weeks um, uh, in interval. But then the first quarter of 2020, a new major Firefox release is shipped every four weeks instead of six weeks, as the release, team manage, the release management team of Firefox believe that they can be more agile and ship features faster and bug fixes uh, while providing a high quality and stability. A common practice in, in Zella Firefox is patch uplift. I will explain this practice because I will study it later in my analysis. So patches that fix critical issues or implement high value features are often promoted directly from a development uh, channel to a stabilization channel, uh, potentially by skipping one or more uh, stabilization channel. However, patch uplift is risky because patches that are rushed through the, the stabilization phase might uh, introduce uh, regression later in the code. The overall objective of this work is to understand whether and how the transition to a more rapid release model can impact different aspects of the development process of Firefox. The objective is divided into two main goals, each associated with several research questions, where in the first goal, we study if and how the transition to more rapid releases impact the software quality and the testing workload, given now that developers have less time to stabilize their releases. This can lead to more post-release bugs and thus impact the software quality. Also, a software, a software testing is a vital phase during the development, software development process. Uh, it can be impacted because of the less time available to test all the features. 
In the second goal, we study to which extent the patch uplifting practice is affected by the switching to a, to a more rapid release cycle, uh, uh, because the latter might impact the, accepted, the number of accepted and rejected patches and the effectiveness of these uh, patch uplifts. To perform analysis, we retrieved bugs reported for, um, for, for, for Firefox from Bugzilla. Then we identified the fault related issues, so the ones that are bugs, really bugs. We get 175k bugs. Then from test trail, which is a testing, testing tool used for manual testing for Firefox, we achieve the test results, 19k test results, and we extract the test run results. Uh, then after that, um, Firefox, whenever you want to ask for a patch uplift, you file a bug uh, in Bugzilla asking for this uplift. So from the issue reports, we identify the uplifted patches. Then after that, from Mercurial, we retrieve that we extract the patches of these uplifted patches. Then we did a bug commit mapping in order to identify the fault inducing patches. So the patches that caused regression later in the code. Our investigation will be guided by these three research questions where we analyze the post release bugs, the number of manual executed tests, and the testers working on the project in order to uh, study how the rapid releases impact the software quality and testing workload. First, in this question, first of all, we measure the number of daily reported. Um, it's not shown in the figure. We, uh, we measured the number of daily reported bugs. We didn't find any difference between the three different release models. So the six weeks model and the six weeks after the removal of Aurora and the four weeks model. We didn't find any difference between these three models in terms of number of reported bugs per day. Then we studied the proportion of fixed bugs. So the number of fixed bugs over the total number. As we can see here in the figure, the figure shows the boxing plot for the uh, percentage of fixed bugs. Uh, we can see that when moving to a more rapid releases, the percentage of uh, the proportion of fixed bugs is decreasing. So we, sorry, uh, so the per percentage of fixed bugs is decreasing when moving to a more rapid release. Okay, now less bugs are less. Let, uh, let's say um, lower percentage of bugs are being fixed. So what about the time to fix these bugs? Then again, we use, we use the survival analysis in order to model the expected time until the event of uh, interest occurs. In our case, it's the bug fixing in the three models. Uh, again, here, the y-axis showing the probabilities for a bug to get fixed, and the x-axis, um, the day and time and days required for the bugs to be fixed. Um, here, the, green, the blue one corresponds to the bugs in the four weeks release cycle, the green one in the uh, six-week release cycle after removal of Aurora, and the orange one, the six-week uh, release cycle before the removal of Aurora. It's clear that the bugs of the four weeks release cycle are being fixed faster than the one in the other, the ones in the other uh, release models. So what you find is that the reporting activity in different release models is similar in terms of the number of reported bugs per day. Bugs are fixed significantly faster in the more rapid releases model. However, a smaller proportion of the bug is actually fixed. Now regarding the manually executed tests, so is now there's more testing or no? The, uh, the, the figure shows the number of executed tests per day over the different release models. Uh, when moving to a more rapid release model, the number of manually executed tests per day is increasing, so more tests are being executed. So we find that the amount of tests executed per day is significantly higher, but with higher functional coverage in the more rapid release model. So now there are more tests are being executed. What about the, 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 the testers? Is there more testers that are doing these tests or less? So like, there's a higher workload or not? Regarding that there's an increase in the number of tests executed. So what we did is we study the number of testers working on this project. Again, using the box and plot, we, we are showing the number of uh, testers per day in the different release models. As moving to a more rapid releases, the number of testers working on the project is increasing. So after the switch of Mozilla Fire for more rapid releases, more testers are contributing to the testing activity. Now moving to the second, 
to the second uh, goal. We will address this research question. Now that, okay, there's less time to stabilize the, okay, there's a removal of stabilizing channel, there's a, redu a reduction of the cycle duration. Okay, what about the patch uplift? There maybe they are reviewed now for less time. Maybe they are causing, like, maybe um, release managers are tending to uh, accept less patches because they won't risk it to have a regression later in the code. Uh, maybe they are rejecting more uh, uh, uplifts. And also the effectiveness of the patch uplift. Given that there's less time to test these uh, patches or to review it, maybe these uplifts are causing more regression later in the code. So first of all, we, we start with studying the number of accepted and rejected uplifts or, uh, over, over time. The figure here shows the number of accepted uplifts over time. The green line corresponds to the removal of Aurora, while the red line, red line corresponds to the four-week release cycle. After the removal of Aurora, there was a temporary like, increase in the number of accepted patches, uplifts, um, on the beta channel. However, everything returns to its normal after that. So we find a short term impact of rapid releases on the number of accepted patches. Then moving to the accept rejected uh, uplifts, we didn't find any difference in the um, number of uh, rejected uplifts after the switch to uh, more rapid releases. So OK, now we decided to study the characteristics of these accepted uplifts, such as the developer experience of the developer experience of uh, the one who submitted this patch, the reviewer experience, and developer experience is measured by the commits, number of commits, uh, previous commits of this developer, the reviewer of this, uh, the reviewer of uh, this uh, patch, the size of this patch, the comments on this patch, and uh, the review duration, and so on. What we find is that after the switch to of Mozilla Firefox to a more rapid release, the accepted patches have a shorter review duration. So now uh, patches are reviewed for a shorter duration uh, and are being submitted by a developer with higher experience. So the patches that are now being accepted are being submitted by one of more experienced developer than the one used to be accepted in the slower release cycle. Okay, given now that Patches, uh, plifts are reviewed for less time, and we know that there's less time to stabilize the release. What about the effectiveness of these patch of lift? Maybe they are now more causing more regression in the code later. So we studied the number of regression bugs caused by these applets. Again, here the here the removal for error by the green line, red line for weeks cycle. We can see that after the removal of error, there was a temporary, uh, not temporary, sorry, there was a, the, the number of uh, regression. Um, and the beta channel is decreasing slightly over time, which, which was not, at, not expected for us as an example. But this is a good finding, positive finding for Firefox. So even though patches requests take less time to review in the more rapid releases, with a reviewer of similar experience as in the, release, in the slower release cycle, the number of regression uh, caused by uplift, the patch uplift decreased slightly. Now, to sum up the results for our Firefox case study, we revisited the impact of rapid release on the software development process in Firefox. We analyzed the evolution of uh, Mozilla Firefox during the period in which it uh, shifted from six week release cycle to a four week uh, release model. First of all, we analyzed the bug handling activity. We find that less percentage of bugs is being fixed with shorter uh, fixing time. Regarding, we, we analyzed the testing activity. We find that now more manual testing uh, is executed with higher functional coverage. More testers are contributing to the testing activity. When analyzing also the patch uplift request, we find that there's no long-term impact on the number of accepted patches, uh, number of accepted uplifts. Patches now, accepted patches now are reviewed for a shorter duration. The accepted patches now are causing less regression in the code later. So now to conclude my whole thesis, the overall reaching goal of the thesis is to better understand the impact of rapid releases on the software development uh, processes to provide valuable insight in what are advantages and disadvantages of uh, rapid adoption of rapid releases and the release management plan that are needed for a successful adoption. Uh, to do so, we analyzed two open source projects, Eclipse and Firefox. Uh, that have adopted rapid releases. To perform analysis, we leverage data from different data sources, recorded in different data sources, such as uh, issue tracking system, um, version control system, 
and a testing tool. And also we survey team members from Eclipse project. Overall, we find an empirical analysis of the impact of rapid releases on the software development process. Uh, software projects should, should watch all the aspects of software development process in order to identify bottlenecks that prevent them from being more agile. And they can also use uh, analytics in order to, uh, let's say, to measure, to measure if the target improvement has been reached uh, after changing the release policy and also um, highlighting the unexpected trends in order to place the appropriate mitigation. Uh, also, um, researchers should be aware of all the release changes in the process before carrying out any empirical analysis because this can impact their uh, results. Uh, now, um, regarding the future renews of our work, uh, first of all, one can expand the case study by comparing the effect of changing and release policy between Eclipse Core and other sub-projects or even plugins. Uh, one could also compare the funding for Eclipse and Firefox with other competing projects for Firefox, as an example, with uh, Chrome, Eclipse with NetBeans. Also, it would be useful to complicate the empirical studies performed in this analysis on to other open source large scale projects. More interesting to also to, uh, more important to, apply, to applicate on other less, younger and less mature project. Maybe we'll have fun, different results. Uh, and also closed source system. More research is needed uh, to analyze the impact of rapid release on other aspects of the software development process. For example, the, the impact of rapid release on social depth, technical depth, uh, automated testing, and so on. As a complement for our research study that mainly focused on the technical aspect, it would be very useful to, uh, to study the social interaction between the development teams. For example, the impact on the rapid release on the collaborativity, involvement, uh, and productivity of the uh, developers. Finally, regarding the tooling, it would be useful um, to investigate the, um, the ability of uh, the usage of um, analytics in order to, um, to better support decision making. Uh, in particular, uh, investigate, uh, in particular, the usage of predictive analysis in order to predict future trends uh, and so on. For example, like um, giving a recommendation that the next step as an example in, in future uh, futurization, but futurization under the rapid release model, like this is more important now to fix because we have a, a shorter release duration. Now this is more important to do it now than to uh, let's say, linger it for later. Thank you, and that's all. Um, that's my present. Thank you all. Um,